guys, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net and today we're going to be talking about the Flashpoint R2 Zoom Lithium Ion TTL Flash or Speedlight. It is amazing, I think, for the money, about $180. This is the best Speedlight on the market and Flashpoint has all these other amazing products. Um, they're very similar, if not the same, pretty much rebranded as Godox. Um, Godox, I think, is sold by b &H Photo and Amazon, where Flashpoint you can get at Adorama. So I love the Flashpoint system. Of course, this is going to be for Sony, but this will pretty much translate to your Nikon, Canon, Fuji, or whatever other brand you have. It's pretty much going to be the same thing. Even the Godox cameras are pretty much the same thing, minus a few items. So there are five major functions of it. We're going to go over three of the five, because two of the functions I really do not use and I'm not well versed enough to try to explain it to you. We will start off with turning the flash on. And once we have done that, uh, we're just gonna go right into the custom functions. Um, just so you guys know how to do that, we're gonna hold our button right here, which is our zoom button down for two seconds. And we're gonna go over the custom functions real quick and then we'll dive into all the flash menus and settings and stuff like that. So pretty much it's really simple. Uh, MFT stands for feet or meters, so I have mine set to feet. Uh, APO stands for auto power off. AF is the uh, assisted autofocus beam, AF assisted beam. This is your slave auto power, time off. Available ready alert is beep, so you can turn that on or off. Again, you just hit your set button and you can change it, change any function here. Your light is how long this stays on. Again, you can turn it off or on and just leave it on. We're gonna leave it on for this video because uh, the illumination's a little bit better for actually capturing it when we're talking about it. And then this bottom one is LCD and it's going to do the contrast. So if we all go up to nine, you can see what the LCD looks like now. And if we go back to zero, the LCD here. And again, you could clear anything out by hitting here. Again, most of these buttons are always gonna have something right above them telling you what to do. Like this button is telling me I can go back. All right, we're gonna go over the uh, five functions and then what, the, how to control stuff within three of those five functions. So if we hit this uh, and you see this up here, right here up in the corner, that means that it is a wireless, it's the wireless setting. Um, I think in theory, some of the newer cameras, you can turn wireless on and they can talk to the flash. Um, I did a little bit of research and I just don't feel like I know enough about it to try to go through and explain this to you. Um, but they're pretty much the same settings as the wireless settings as they're going to be for the radio settings and I'll be going over those in depth. Again, this is slave mode wireless setting right here. Then if you notice the icon changes up here in the left corner and now we're in radio mode. And so this is how this flash will control multiple other strobes or flashes. So this flash actually can control my strobe right over there, which I think is really cool. And we'll go over all the functions for that. And again, this is the same thing, slave mode, where it is in slave mode and it can um, control. Um, it, can, can, it can be controlled by a master like this strobe. If I want to make this strobe my master or I have a trigger I wanted to make, it will control this in slave mode. So, and then we can hit this one more last time. And this is the mode that you leave it in if it's sitting on top of your camera and you're actually taking pictures at a wedding or somewhere and you're not going wireless, you're not going off camera, this is the mode you're gonna want it in to control your speed light. So let's go over everything that it offers. So we're in TTL mode, which is pretty much automatic mode. Uh, same thing as your auto setting in your camera if you want to shoot auto and you don't know how to control your flash very well, this is the mode that you're probably gonna want it in TTL mode. It meters and tries to give the correct amount of information between the camera so that it puts out the right amount of light to give you a proper compensation. Uh, so if we hit here, this is our zoom. Now for of you that don't know what zoom does is, the higher the number of zoom, the more narrow the beam of light will be. So at 200, it's gonna be very narrow, which can be great if you're doing like a headshot and you're using this behind the subject, you're using the speed light behind the subject, maybe with a grid set on it or something, and you're using it to separate the subject to separate them from the background a little bit. This is gonna be nice to have a very direct beam of light instead of being very wide, which if we go all the way down to, we'll hit this again, 
and we'll go all the way down to 20 and it's going to be a much wider beam of light. Or you can just let the camera pick for you or the, the speed light pick for you. All right, moving on, the next button again is going to do your exposure compensation there. If you want to do that in TTL mode and how much of exposure compensation, pretty much, real simple. Next will be, there's nothing there, even though I pushed the button. If you notice, anytime there's no information right there, that means that that button is not gonna do anything for you. And then our sync mode, sync on and off. Now, what is high speed sync? Most cameras at a 200th of a second or 250th of a second, pretty much your shutter speed at two or 250, um, are gonna start getting lines. And the further up you go in shutter speed, the more of your picture is going to have a black line through it to the point where your shutter speed is so high that you're just getting a black picture. If you've ever noticed that, that's because you don't have high speed sync on, which has to do with the way the curtain works with your camera and the flash. So if you wanna go above 200 to 250 shutter speed, guess what? Turn this bad boy on, now you can. You can go to 5,000 if you want. And you can capture that beautiful motion of a, um, you know, some kind of soccer game or anytime, or if you're doing some kind of studio work with water and you're trying to freeze that motion, you need a high shutter, just make sure you turn your high speed sync on. Very simple. All right, so the mode, the next mode that we're gonna look at is a manual mode. So this is how you're gonna control your flash completely. It's very simplistic. Um, so again, this is how we control our zoom. We've talked about that. Um, if we don't hit this button right here, we can or we cannot hit this button right here because this is going to automatically do this. This is how much power we're putting out. So the 1 1 is full power. So it is putting out max power at 1 1 and 1 32th power there, and it goes all the way up to 128, which is great. I had a shoot yesterday, and I needed very small amounts of power, and that is the amount of power I used to get the shot that I needed. Next is going to be our S1 and S2. Those are your optical slaves. Again, the first one, S1, is just your basic optical slave, and your second one is your intelligent optical slave. So we'll go back, S1 and S2, as you can see. If you guys do want to know more about that, we will go into that more in depth in another video. And then, of course, you turn your high-speed sync on and off. Moving on to our next mode. And it is the one I am least versed in, is the multi-mode, also known as the stroboscopic mode. Now, what this does is, is it takes, it, the flash goes off multiple times, and while the flash is going off, the shutter stays open and you can have some movement while the shutter's open and you can capture, let's say, a person moving their head left all the way to right. So left, center, right, and it captures that, which I think is really cool. Or it's really good if you're going to, let's say, um, you're on a black background and you've got like a red dye and it's gonna strobe it, it's gonna hit, the, it's gonna flash it, and you can, you'll be able to see the dice roll across the table or something. Um, of course, you don't want it going too fast or it's going to kind of be blurred out. So that's what the stroboscopic mode does. I'm not an expert at it. I've never actually shot it. So this is basically watching a few videos, reading a few articles online. So I apologize for anybody that is an expert in this because you probably know a lot more than I do. I just kind of wanted to walk through the functions of it and kind of explain it to you guys a little bit. Again, we have zoom mode right here. And this is how we control the amount of power that we put out. This is how many times the flash goes off. Now, granted, if you set your flash down to one fourth mode, the most times that you can have your flash go off is one fourth, and you can't go any lower than one fourth. You can't go full power and do this. This is just not a, a powerful enough speed light. So if we switch to, let's say, like, like one sixty fourth or something like that, then we can have 10 flashes. And then your, your hertz right here, is based on frames per second, roughly. And I'm gonna read a little bit from the manual. And so hopefully this will make a little bit of sense. So calculating the shutter speed. Again, this all has to do with shutter speed and your shutter staying open with the flash going off and the hertz. During stroboscopic flash, the shutter should remain open until the firing stops. Use the formula below to calculate the shutter speed and set it with your camera. For example, if the number of flashes is 10, which we've got it set to 10 right here, and the firing frequency is 
five hertz. The shutter speed should be at least two seconds. So that means the shutter speed will be two seconds if you have your flash set to 10 and the hertz at five. So hopefully that explains a little bit for you guys. If not, I would get online, do a little more research. I actually plan to play around with this a little bit more. Um, something I've never really messed with or been interested in. It's just never come up my alley of things that I needed to know. But now that I've run into it, I've done a little research, I am a little intrigued. So hopefully we can make another video where I explain this more in depth and I don't sound like a complete idiot. Um, but I felt like I needed to go over it a little bit since you guys are probably watching this to kind of learn the functions of this speed light. Um, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go into our main modes. Again, if you see this up here, that is going to be your wireless and we're not going to go over that today. But pretty much it's pretty similar to your radio. And in here is probably one of the coolest things that this speed light does and I absolutely love it. And that is that I can control this strobe right here with this speed light. I mean, I think that's just amazing. Again, we're gonna go through these functions. I'm gonna show you how it controls the strobe over here. It's awesome. And uh, let's, let's go on and jump right into it. So again, zoom, that's how we're gonna control our zoom right here. Um, right here is going to be our high-speed sync. Again, if you read these functions down here, it's very, very simplistic and ex explanatory. explanatory. Uh, this is channel, CH stands for channel, what channel it on. If you notice, that I do have this on channel one as well. And we'll go back over here. And then this is the group that it is in. Now, as you do things, you will, you will notice some of these modes change. So if we go back out of group and we'll go back into zoom. Now watch when we hit group down here. These both change right here. So this is gonna control power output and uh, which mode you want to be in on in the channel. So again, we'll hit zoom again and watch right there at the bottom when I hit group, it switches over. And now I can switch which mode I want this speed light to be in. Uh, I want it off, not using it. I want it TTL or I want it in manual mode. Um, now I have the strobe set to channel A. So channel A is gonna control the strobe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit uh, group again and we're gonna go down to A. And we've got it in manual mode. I could switch to TTL mode or off. So like. If I wanted to turn the strobe off, um, I hit mode, it's off. I can hit it again, now it's in TTL mode, and I can hit it again, now it is in manual mode. I can then hit this right here for the amount of power I wanna give it. And now we'll switch back over here, and you guys can see I can control the amount of power. And it's, I mean, it's almost simultaneously changing the amount of power that this strobe is get, putting out which I think is cool as all get out. I absolutely love it. And I plan to keep building my Flashpoint system, also known as Godox, depending on where you buy it from. If you buy it from Amazon or b and I think it's Godox. If you buy it from Adorama, um, it's going to be Flashpoint. Again, I just love these systems. They work so well. So again, if we wanna hit group, um, if we had a group B, if we had a one on B, we could change that. We could turn anything on group B into manual mode, and then we could put how much power we wanted it to have. So very, very simple. Again, um, I can go on and hit test mode. So watch, as you can see, the strobe is firing. And if I don't want, the strobe is firing at one fourth power. That's whew, so bright, it blinded me right there. So let's go and make the strobe actually put out much less power. And let's, the strobe will go all the way up to 128th. I think it goes to 256, but this can only turn it up to 128th on here. Now watch the strobe go off and it's very small amounts of power, not a lot. Um, also, these do talk to each other because of the radio signals, so you can actually uh, control the strobe if I was to go um, over here and turn it on to manual mode. Um, the strobe will go off with the test button right here. I just can't control how much power output the strobe has because they are talking to each other because the strobe is in slave mode. I could take the strobe out of slave mode and it wouldn't go off when I hit the test fire here if it was on. But we're going to probably do a tutorial on the strobe another day. It is the Flashpoint Explorer 600. Main thing today is the speed light. So again, this is the radio signal. We went through this. Um, I should say that you do have one other mode, which is your stroboscopic. Again, we went over that before. Um, we're not going to dive into it, but it's pretty much the same thing. You can go through and control multi strobes, flashes, whatever, for your stroboscopic shot. 
So for people that, that really are into this, that, that are very good at it, um, this is how you do your stroboscopic. So again, this is, this is your mode within the main mode. Your main modes are here and in the modes that, you know, your TTL, manual, and stroboscopic are all over here. And then the last and least mode is the slave mode. So this is if you want your speed light to be a slave. Um, I could make the strobe over here. I could make it a master and then it would control my speed light, um, which is fantastic. Again, the speed light is a master and a slave or a transmitter and receiver built into it. That's pretty much what this whole unit is right here. And it does pretty much the same thing. We can change uh, the zoom, how much, how wide we want our beam of light. Uh, if you notice that right there, what does that mean? That means you can't do anything if you hit it. Um, then you can pick the group that you want it in. So if the strobe was actually controlling the speed light, um, I could tell the strobe uh, I, want, I want to put the speed light in group B and then I want to make it one half power and it would switch it over here to one half power and control that. And then of course the channel, which channel you want it on. Um, it goes up to 32 channels, I believe. So if we go back, it can go up to 32 channels and we just keep them on channel one so they're all on the same channel. That is pretty much a walkthrough of most of the functions that you need to know about your Flashpoint R2 speed light, uh, lithium ion TTL. There's a couple different versions. If you buy one, the best one on the market is $180. Get the one that says lithium ion R2 TTL. Now this S stands for Sony. If you have an N or a C there, it will stand for Canon and or Nikon. You guys have made it this far. If you wanna check out our newest video, it will be right here. If you wanna check out the product, it will be down here. If you do happen to click on it and purchase it, it does give us a little bit of commission and that helps me a lot keep making these videos. And of course, guys, right down below, go and leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, follow along. We'll catch you next time.